Have you ever wondered if it's too late and you've missed your boat to becoming an artist 20 years ago? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can pursue art at the age of 30, 40, 50, even 80 years old with a simple step-by-step -step formula anyone can do that requires no talent, no followers, no money. Now, you might be skeptical. Dries, is it really never too late? And can anyone, even at the age of 80, still pursue art? Isn't that a little bit of a stretch? Well, let me give you some examples. Vasily Kandinsky, very famous artist, started at the age of 30. Mark Holtzko, you're probably familiar with him. Well, he started experimenting with his color field paintings in his mid 40s. Before that, nobody thought he was talented. Nobody thought that he was going to make it in any way, shape or form. Now, the best example I stumbled upon in my research is Bill Trailer, who was born a slave and then worked in labor for decades on end. And he started painting at the age of 85, 80 and became a famous outsider artist. Now, why am I sharing these examples with you? Well, if there is someone that had a similar position to you and massively succeeded, that simply means that you can succeed too. And the reality is that I could give thousands of these examples over the last 100, 200 years. And I can promise you that after watching this video, you will have the exact mental models to pursue art at any age. Now, in order to fulfill this promise, we have to take a step back to the first portrait art class I attended, where I learned the most powerful lesson when it comes to pursuing art at a later age. So I arrive at the class, everybody's preparing, there's a little bit of nervousness, everybody's ready to have a great time, except for one lady. She's exceptionally nervous, she's kind of stressing out. And before the class, I talked to her and she told me that she used to love drawing as a kid, that her parents didn't really encourage her to do that because she couldn't Make money from art and so she followed her advice and then went into corporate and was working corporate for the last 20 years and so I asked her why suddenly art now why are you coming to this class and she told me that her aunt the one who always encouraged her to pursue art to pursue her creativity just passed away two weeks early and the class starts with a couple of warm-up poses one to two minute sessions and her first drawing is absolutely terrible second drawing same third drawing same Fourth drawing is a longer pose, 20 minutes or something. And after the pose, the proportions on her face, the drawing, of course, are completely off. The nose is elongated as long as the face. It's absolutely terrible. And you see that this lady is kind of becoming very frustrated. She's devastated. And the instructor sees her distress and he goes over to her, puts his arm around her and says, wow. This nose elongated like that, it's absolutely amazing. It reminds me of one of the best portrait artists who ever lived, Modigliani. And he points at the Modigliani calendar hanging on the wall and says, I believe this means that there's Modigliani inside of you. And in that moment where she's about to burst into tears, she has a choice. She can either look at her drawing and realize that the proportions are completely off, her drawing is absolutely terrible, and she missed an opportunity to learn how to draw 20 years ago, or she can contemplate her newfound identity as reincarnation of Modigliani. And the latter one, for the rest of the class, she drew noses all over the place with a beautiful smile on her face. Now, what I saw that day during that class would change the course of my life. I just didn't knew it back then. If you focus on the nose that's out of proportions, you will start crying. But if you focus on the nose that's out of proportions, just like Modigliani's nose is out of proportions, you will have the biggest smile on your face. Depending on what you focus on in life, your experience of life itself changes. And the ability to control your experience of life is obviously everything. Think about this. If you can control your experience of learning and make it more positive, then you will obviously learn more and improve faster. If you can control your experience of selling art and make it more positive, then you will obviously start selling more and make more money. And so the question becomes, how can you control your focus at will so that you can enjoy the process of pursuing art more. The solution to this whole problem is something that I call direction question. Now, in order to explain it, let me show you a study done by Harvard University. In this study, they divided the staff of seven hotels into two groups. And to the first group, they explained how what they were doing at the hotel during their work was very similar to working out, how vacuum cleaning was similar to working out, how many calories they were burning on the job, and all sorts of information related to that. And to the second group, they just gave 
gave general health related information. And then they went back to these participants several weeks later and what they found was that the participants in the first group had lost weight. And so by changing their focus, not only did their experience change, but their physiolo physiology, physiology, their biology changed completely. And so that is the power of controlling your focus. And so when it comes to pursuing art at a later age, the age of 40 or 30 or 50, we have to figure out a way to change our perception about age so that we can see that it's actually a benefit and not some kind of disadvantage. A lot of people in their 30s or 40s or 50s, they think that it's too late to even learn how to make art and become actually good at that. And so what I've done is I've created a series of questions, 90 questions to be more more precise that are designed in a way that if you answer them you will be forced to focus on the positive side of age and so as you are answering them you are changing your focus from negative viewpoints about age to positive viewpoints about age aka controlling your focus and so what I encourage you to do is take one of these questions each day and then answer the question for 90 days straight in order to reshape your focus. So let me read a couple of those questions so that you get an idea. How does the gratitude for little things often seen with age be translated into the details of your artwork? Simple question. Can you think of a time when your age was an advantage in understanding a complex concept? One more question. Can you describe a challenge that you faced in your younger years that you now handle with ease due to your experience? Now, the reason I came up with these types of questions is actually from another Harvard guy called Sean Acker who did a very similar thing, not designed to make you see the positive about age, but designed to make you see the positive about life and to make people more happy. And he did a lot of research on this. It worked tremendously well. And so if it works for happiness, it probably also works for age. And so hence this entire list. I will give you the entire list at the end of the video. Now the questions I've showed you are pretty easy. Not all of the questions are easy. Some questions are actually pretty hard and so what's going to happen is that you will have to spend a couple of minutes thinking about what the answer is and that's the whole point. If you spend minutes trying to come up with the answer, you are spending minutes trying to focus on the positive things about age and so what's going to happen is that you are forcing yourself to think about the positive things about age hence you are developing a mental habit of thinking positively about age changing your perspective changing your focus there's this beautiful quote by George Eliot that sums all of this up beautifully it's never too late to be what you might have been now there's one problem with this whole system of direction questions and that is that thinking your way out of a thinking problem is pretty hard to do. Let's give an example. Let's say you're tired and you want to think your way out of tiredness. You will be thinking for a very long time. If you wake up in the morning and you want to make yourself less tired, a much easier thing to do is to just take a very cold shower and in a matter of minutes you will be fresh. And so oftentimes doing something is the solution to a thinking problem. Oftentimes when I'm at a lower energy level and I want to have more energy, I just do five pull-ups and immediately I'm energized. And so so what does this mean? Well, it means that this whole direction question thing is only 50% of the equation. Ideally, there is something that we can do that will permanently change our focus and our belief about ourselves and our age and everything. And this is something that I stumbled upon in the last couple of years. So let me explain what happened. A couple of years ago, during the whole COVID epidemic type of thing, I thought like, yeah, okay, perhaps I should do something about my health. Perhaps I should start working out. And initially, I just wanted to do this for health purposes. If I improve my blood flow, then nutrients will be transported into all organs in the body, including the brain. I might be a little bit smarter or something. I will have more energy. I will have better sleep. There will be autophagy. All of these health reasons that people are shouting in our faces online nowadays. So I started working out. Now I realized that I was a little bit older. I was in my late 20s. And so becoming lean as you get older becomes much harder. And so I didn't really have high hopes for being checked or anything like that. On top of that, when I was 15 years old, I was going going to a sports school playing a lot of tennis and a lot of the guys in that school were pretty checked and I was absolutely not and so I didn't really thought that I had good genetics or anything like that and lo and behold 
after a couple of years of working out, as you can see on the screen, I became somewhat muscular. And here's what happened. In the last couple of years, I definitely gained a little bit of muscle. In no way am I checked like these Instagram models or anything like that. I'm definitely not claiming that, but I'm definitely way more checked than I thought was possible in just a couple of years. And I'm not working hard. I'm not working out and pushing myself on every single set all the way to failure or anything like that. I'm taking a lot of breaks in between sets. There's music, I'm dancing a little bit, I'm having a great time. This is not pushing myself in any way. And this is what is possible at the age of 30. I'm now 31 and I'm looking way better than I looked when I was 15 or 21 or 24 or anything in between. And so not only does this show us that at the age of 31 you can indeed look way better than you were looking at the age of 21 but something else happened something unexpected happened every time I look in the mirror I'm visually reminded of the fact that I'm looking way better than when I was 21 and a strange thing will happen. If you look more in shape than when you were at 21, all of your worries about becoming older, all of your worries about your body decaying, they just evaporate, they just melt away. Because now you have that visual proof, that reminder that anything is possible at any age. And so what I would recommend you is to just start working out you would be surprised of how much in shape you can get at the age of 30 or 35 or 40 or even 50. Now another side benefit for artists specifically when it comes to working out is that when you are sitting in the same pose for long hours on end, your back will start to hurt, your elbow will start to hurt, things will start to hurt even at the age of 21 or two or three, things in my body started to hurt but if you work out if you strengthen those muscles those pains at least for me completely disappear I can sit in the same pose for a very long time without any pain and if you have no pain nothing standing in between you and making art well guess what you will make more art you will enjoy the process more and you will improve faster according to a poll on the channel 62 percent of artists are experiencing some kind of physical limitation or mental limitation in between them and making art now am i saying that working out is going to solve all of those problems no of course not but i have a strange feeling that 80 percent of those problems would probably be solved by just simply working out now why am i talking about working out in an art related video well the obvious one is of course that what you think you can accomplish at a later age is much less than what you can actually accomplish but there's more to it achieving something that seems to be complex that seems to be difficult like for example getting checked i wouldn't say that i'm checked but you get the point getting checked the equation for getting checked is very easy getting checked equals working out plus healthy food. All of that advice that you hear online, it's all BS. Going to the gym, doing some particular type of exercise, using particular tools, following particular diets, fo like all of that is just BS. I don't go to the gym, I never go to the gym. I just go to the ground next to my studio, do some push-ups, whatever it is. And so why am I saying this? Well, breaking something down to its most simple form, working out plus healthy food equals being fit is very useful. The same goes for oil painting. If you want to learn oil painting and you want to become a master oil painter, the equation is very easy. Practice daily plus quality feedback. And so understanding those simple underlying mathematical equations is going to be very beneficial for you. So let's take master oil painter if that is your goal. Practice daily plus quality feedback. How are you going to do that? Well, practice daily, what I would recommend is following the three level habit formula, a habit formula that I've also followed for working out. The formula is very simple. You have a level one habit, a level two habit, and a level three habit. The level one habit is the most easy form of your habit so that you never have an excuse to not do it during a particular day. For example, when it comes to drawing or oil painting, this might be drawing one circle on a particular piece of paper. Level one habit. There's never a day where you cannot do that. Level two habit is slightly harder. For example, if it's drawing, then you could say, well, uh, my level two habit is drawing for 10 minutes. Great, 10 minutes is fairly easy. 
then a level three habit might be okay i'm going to draw for one hour straight and really try to work on something new and, and challenge myself to some extent having this three level habit formula is very powerful because most people just have level three habits or level zero habits and then they go to our level three habits on monday and tuesday and wednesday and thursday and then they're burned out and they go right back to level zero habits losing all of that momentum and then next week or two weeks later they pick it back up and they're back at level three habits and then they go back to zero and the whole thing doesn't work and you're constantly losing momentum and so this level one two three formula enables you to constantly keep up momentum and never letting it slip and having that goal in mind on a daily basis now when it comes to quality feedback there are a lot of options nowadays you could go online community wise deviant art reddit there's probably some subreddit where art critique and advice is given to people and you can give critique yourself or you can receive critique whatever you want you could also just open your own whatsapp group with a couple of friends where on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis you critique each other's work and you grow together now this can be extremely powerful if you learn from your own mistakes then you're only learning as quickly as you can learn yourself but if you learn from 10 different people's mistakes all at the same time then you are literally learning 10 times faster and so those types of groups are extremely powerful another way that you could do is step into the marketplace yourself with social media for example where you share your artworks your process and then ask your followers to give feedback not just give the best PR version of yourself and only show finished drawings only show finished paintings no give unfinished drawings and then ask them for feedback so that you can learn from that so that you can grow and build that community out and then a third option is of course to go for a professional mentor especially if it's someone that you really look up to that you really admire that you kind of want to learn from because you really like that particular type of style if you have the funding to do that very powerful probably the most powerful one on this list but that requires money most people don't have that i definitely didn't have that all the way in the beginning so just one of the options you know now in order to solve this mystery of pursuing art at the age of 31 40 50 85 there's one more element to the equation and that is the money side in the story i told in the beginning of this video there's this lady who went into a corporate setting because her parents advised her to do so because there was no money to be made in the art world and so we have to ask ourselves this question is this true is there no money to be made in the art world and truth be told if you go back 20 years or 40 years or 50 years visual art was a very difficult trajectory to pursue and there was not that much money to be made and more importantly everything was guarded by gatekeepers and so this advice from her parents is actually a pretty good advice for that time but times have changed and i would argue that there never has been a better time to be an artist than today because the creator economy is one of the fastest growing economies in the world so let's take a look at a couple of numbers 68 percent of companies prefer to work with an influencer now a couple of years ago, this was 0%. And if you are pursuing your passion, if you are pursuing art, then you can, in fact, build up an audience, build up a community that companies will want to sell to. And they will now see you as an influencer from your perspective that just being an artist. And if we take a look at social media, the numbers on those channels, those profiles, take a look at, for example, YouTube, 36% growth per year. YouTube channels have been growing the last couple of years by 36% every year. On top of that, the creative economy is expected to double in size by the year 2027. And so I think it's very safe to say that there never has been a better time to change your dreams than in the 21st century. And you can take advantage of that by using social media. Now, even if those numbers are slightly off by 30% or 40% or even 50%, then we can still conclude that there never has been a better time to be an artist than today. And you can, in fact, chase any dream at any age by utilizing those tools and the best part of this whole social media creator economy opportunity is that you in fact don't have to take it you don't have to become an influencer or a social media guru or whatever to become an artist there's way more to the art equation than just money in the last couple of days i was thinking about these billionaires that have all of this money and what do they do with that money well they give it away 
And so I was thinking about myself, why are they doing that? Why are they giving away all of that money? And why is it those rich people that are giving away that money? And the first answer that came to mind is obviously the whole tax evasion and benefits that they are getting that I don't know anything about. But then as I thought more about it, I started to think about the fact that money is just not that valuable. Why are they giving it away? because it's not that valuable. I bet if we would give them the opportunity to give a portion of their health away, they would not do that. If we would give them tax benefits to give a portion of their own health away, they would not do that. If we would give them tax benefits to give a couple of years of their life away, they would probably also not do that. And so it's funny because the thing that people want, money, once they have it, they give it away. And the thing that they have, namely time and health, is something that they simply don't appreciate. But those billionaires that have all the money, that's probably the thing that they would actually exchange it for if they would have that opportunity. So that's a little rant just to say that there's way more to art than money. And the creator economy is an option. It's a tool, but it's not a necessity. You don't have to chase that if you don't want to. Now, as promised, here are the direction questions to change your focus. If you want the full list, click on the link in the description. And for those people who don't fall in the lost category, Category, who in fact think that money is important this whole video everything that I said is completely worthless if you don't figure out how to sell your art and make money from your practice and luckily I've made a video to solve that problem called drowning in unsold pieces selling secrets galleries won't tell you link in the description and in the end screen that said get the hell out of here